when hunter Bram Schaefer is attacked by a grizzly bear. He faces a life or death battle for survival. I thought to myself, oh, you're dead. Severely injured and alone, Bram has to fight to get off the mountain in a violent storm. I was starting to think, probably wasn't going to make it. Help me, please! Just when it looks like he might be saved, a deadly new threat appears. He could very easily be dead by morning. Bram, stay awake now, come on! I'm doing fine, don't worry. Woo! Bram Schaefer has just finished high school. To celebrate, his father Dennis has brought he and his brother to hunt elk with some friends on Horseshoe Mountain in Montana. My dad and a friend of mine's dad had decided they just wanted to do one last trip, you know, since we were kind of moving out and getting on with our lives. Watch out for these potholes. Looking, I'm looking, eyes like a hawk, son. Eyes like a mole, Dad. Your kids are going from boyhood to manhood, and it's part of the transition. You learn from their fathers when their fathers are having fun. Keep up, Dad. Keep up, son. Don't you worry. But after a week of hunting, they still haven't shot anything. Sure your rifle's shooting straight? Yep. You ain't bagged one yet. Well, just a matter of time, son. The mountain rises to 10,000 feet out of the wilderness. There's no roads. Uh, it's just trails, and it's just pretty wild. September is hunting season for people and for bears. We've seen lots of bears. It becomes a feeding ground for them once this rifle season starts. The bears are more dangerous towards fall because they're getting ready for hibernation, so they're scavenging for whatever they can find to fatten up for winter. Today is the last day of the trip. The men climb almost to the top of the mountain, from where they'll sweep down in a wide line hoping to find some elk on the way. They don't have much time. A big storm is heading their way. OK, guys, why don't we all spread out, see if we can't flush something out? Bram goes to the end of the line. OK, let's move it. Last chance, Pop. Last chance for what, son? Last chance to, to bag, bag an elk. elk. You said it. Bram had his own speed and the way he went, he just went over a ridge, see? So he wasn't in sight of us. Bram takes off alone, ignoring any possible dangers. He was very strong physically and strong-willed. He's fearless. What's gonna hurt me? Bram's orange vest might stop other hunters from shooting at him but it also makes him more visible to predators. But Bram's a high school football star, bold and brash. I was a pretty cocky kid. I didn't worry too much about anything. You know, I was 18, bulletproof. <laughs> I walked for quite a ways and wasn't seeing much. I, you know, some elk sign on the ground and stuff, but. Nothing really to suggest anything was around. We were kind of supposed to stay within earshot of each other, but they were up on the top of the mountain, and I was off kind of coming around the side, a little lower. Now 
now a few hundred yards away from his dad and the other hunters, Bram is suddenly aware that the forest is too quiet. I kind of got a weird feeling about then, and there wasn't hardly a noise. You know, there weren't no birds chirping or ground squirrels running around or anything. And there must be something around here keeping the birds quiet, you know, a predator of some sort around. Kind of made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. slow down. My next thought was get the hell out of the way. I was just freaking out. Next thing I know, she's sitting there with her head in my lap, just huffing at me. I was very terrified. I thought to myself, you need to either eat me or get off of me. My temper was starting to get <laughs> the better of me. So I reached up and punched her in the nose. I come back with my other hand, and she bit through my thumb. And I got to looking around, trying to find my gun. She was sitting on it with her hind legs. Just picked me up and shook me like a puppy with a sock. It felt like vice on your leg. And then I thought to myself, oh, you're dead right there. When she got done shaking my leg, uh, she just kind of dropped me. I think she was just going to see if, if she'd done enough damage that she could just leave me there. As long as Bram keeps still, the bear thinks he's no longer a threat. The moment he moves, the bear attacks again. Unaware of Bram's terrible ordeal, two hunters further down the mountain, Bruce Paisecki and his son Bryce, are also looking for elk, so far without any luck. Come on, son. Our luck will turn. On their way to try a new spot, Bruce sees something that makes him very nervous. I'm starting to see bear sight and footprints of the bears. See that? It's a big claw. Pretty recent, too. But the hair was starting to stand on the back of my neck. With bears in the area, Bruce wants to get off the mountain as quickly as possible. That means going straight down through unknown territory. At the bottom, they'll try to find a trail to lead them back to their camp a couple of miles away. There was something crawling up my neck that told me something's wrong. Pay attention. And part of it I told myself was, oh, you just don't know where you're going. You're worried about getting lost. I'm getting very concerned, because now I'm walking in an area that I can surprise a bear at a moment's notice. So I'm trying to make noise. I was saying things like, OK, bear, here I come. You know, get aside. Here I'm coming. I'm coming through. OK, bear. Here we come. Coming through. Bram has done the nearly impossible. He's killed a grizzly with a single shot.
I felt just a lot of relief. I was pretty happy for, you know, a few seconds anyway. Didn't really know what all the wounds I had. I was just kind of trying to figure out, you know, what damage was being done and what I needed to do to get out of it. A mile and a half away, at the bottom of the mountain, Bram's father and brother arrive back at camp. They haven't seen Bram for nearly two hours. We got to camp, no Bram. So I asked everybody, where's Bram? Have you seen him? No. Have you heard from him? No. I said, well, something's wrong. I got my other son immediately, and we uh, went back up on the mountain. Let's go look for him. I knew he wasn't lost. He, he had a compass in his head. So I knew that wasn't a problem. But for him not to show up was just, it ate at you. Back up the mountain, Bram is taking stock of his wounds. Adrenaline is pumping through his body, so he has no idea how badly he's hurt. I noticed my shoulder hurt, my head was bleeding, but I didn't really know what all the wounds I had. Bram has been savagely mauled. The bear has ripped his scalp and bitten deep in several places. But the adrenaline is stopping him from feeling the worst of his injuries. Standing up for the first time since the attack, Bram is in for a shock. Ah! His right thigh has been ripped from the bone. My upper thigh was just shredded. You could see the artery in there just pulsing, and then just, just big slabs of meat just kind of hanging loose. I pulled the meat back up and kind of laid it back in the hole. I wrapped my uh, hunter's orange vest around the, the wound and kind of tried to tourniquet it a little bit. It hurt pretty bad when I pulled it down tight. First thing, I sat there and I shot three shots like they teach you in hunter safety, and it's you know it's supposed to be the universal signal that I need help. Somebody's supposed to come find you. Climbing the mountain through the storm, Bram's father, Dennis, cannot hear his son's gunshots. Bram! Son, can you hear me? Bram! It was getting really nasty. The wind started blowing about 30 miles an hour. We couldn't hear nothing. If he fell down, broke a leg, whatever. With the thunder and lightning, this was starting to become a life-threatening situation. Ah! 
when no one responds to his distress signal, Bram's hopes of being rescued begin to fade. And I sat there for maybe 10 minutes thinking, you're an idiot. Nobody's gonna come get you. You hear sh three shots all the time. You never go look for anybody. So I had to decide what I was gonna do. And I just decided I'd better get up and get going. But walking with such terrible injuries is nearly impossible. Bram must get off the mountain quickly. If he doesn't get help soon, his injuries will kill him. Help! I was going to try to head towards camp, but in order to get there, I would have had to go uphill. And I didn't have the strength in my leg to go uphill. I could just kind of peg leg along, and if I kept my knee straight, I could use it. So I just picked out a point out there where I knew I would come across a trail and started heading for that. I was pretty pissed off at the world. I hollered, stayed mad as I could for quite a while. Bram's anger is fueling the adrenaline that's pumping through his system. It's the only thing fighting the pain and keeping him alive. I think the things that kept me going were just willpower and a good, healthy anger base. It was hard. There was a couple of times I thought about, you know, maybe just sitting down and quitting, but I'm about as stubborn as they get. I knew if I didn't keep going, I probably wouldn't make it anywhere and nobody would find me. Oh, damn! As night falls, the storm gets worse. Further down the mountain, Bruce and Bryce Paisecki are still searching for the trail that will lead them back to camp. In the darkness, Bruce is now very nervous about getting lost in bear country. The uneasiness that I had, part of it was not finding the trail, because I didn't want to be lost. And the other part was worrying about the bear sign that I'd seen. It was just made. I know they're there somewhere. Dad, can't see. Let's use the flashlight. No, no. We get lost. We need them batteries full. All right. Okay, so stick close, so we can see each other. On the other side of the mountain, Bram's father, Dennis, combs the slopes in a desperate search for his son. And the weather finally went down to about 10 degrees. And he's out there. So I'm looking, and we're shooting and hollering.
Dennis knows Bram might not hear the shots through the storm. But he also knows he's taught him vital skills to survive. He knew how to get under shelter without having fire. He also knew that if you are caught in cold weather, you walk. No matter if you walk a 100-foot circle, you walk until daylight. But Bram's leg is so badly mauled that walking down the steep mountain slope is impossible. With every fall, Bram risks tearing the exposed artery in his leg. If it bursts, he'll bleed to death in minutes. Alone and on the wrong side of the mountain, Bram begins to realize how slim his chances of survival are. I was starting to think, probably wasn't gonna make it. help is closer than Bram realizes. Further down the mountain, Bruce and Bryce finally hit upon the trail that will take them back to camp. Dad, over here. Look. So I'm saying to myself, I hope this is Rock Creek Trail. I hope this is Rock Creek Trail. And by God, it was. Hey, that's our trail. Excellent. All right, look, we're both tired, soaked through. Let's take a short break. But Bruce's nerves are still on edge. I'm still got this uneasy feeling about this bear sign that I'm seeing. His fears are aggravated by the fact that he and his son are using old-fashioned muzzle-loading rifles. It's a fun weapon, and it is a primitive weapon. It's kind of like shooting with a bow and arrow. You only get one shot, basically. But if the powder gets wet, the gun is useless. And I thought, you know, we're all wet. These weapons are wet. We don't know if they shoot when they're wet. Let's see if this thing works. I heard a gunshot that was pretty close. I just about jumped through my skin, you know. I was pretty excited. I think that's Dave. I thought it was my friend Dave, because now I'm an hour late for, for dinner. this voice come around in the wind. Did you hear that? Yeah. But it was like a frantic voice. And I thought, that wouldn't be Dave. I mean, Dave, if he's looking for me, he knows he's found me, he wouldn't be screaming. Dave! Dave! Help! Knowing help is nearby, Bram begins to relax. But it's too soon and it puts him in even greater danger. I didn't have to bear the whole weight of it anymore, so my body started shutting down. Help me! Quivering and stuff, so. Help me! Bram is going into shock. If he loses consciousness now, Bruce and Bryce might not find him until it's too late. He was yelling back at me, but it was frantic. I couldn't hear what he was saying. All right, shine your flashlight up in those trees. Let Dave see where we're at. Dave! I didn't see no light from him, and I kept yelling. Dave! We're down here! Rock Creek Trail! At the trail, hey! And this wind wouldn't let up. And then all of a sudden I heard, help me, help me. Help me! Get back my bear! The wind came around and just carried it just perfect. And all of my fears of bears just came alive. Oh my God, somebody's hurt up there. Help me! We gotta help. You stay behind me. Anything comes at us, use that muzzle loader, you understand? You all right? Okay. 
Bruce and Bryce start climbing towards the voice in the darkness. But Bruce is hesitant, fearing he's leading his son into a potential bear attack. As I'm getting closer, I'm yelling at the top of my voice, because now I'm scared. And I'm going, where are you at? Who are you? I was getting excited because I knew there was a bear in the area. And this guy said he was attacked. I flashed the light. And I, I hit something up in the woods, but it was a red glow. And Bear's eyes are red, I'm thinking, when, when they see him with the flashlight. I said, Bryce, the bear's right on him. Let's go. Let's get up there. like the height of my adrenaline. I have my pistol cocked, and I get down below where this guy is standing. He's just shaking like crazy, and steam is rolling off of him. Don't move! Stay where you are! I'm coming! Where's the bear? Bear's dead! My mind's really racing. I, I don't know what to do with hurt people. You can just kind of see the, the color leaving his face. But you know, he never really acted panicky or anything around me. Even though he looked hideous to me, in my mind I'm thinking, reassure him that he's gonna be okay. What's your name, son? Bram. Okay, Bram. Now we're gonna get you off this mountain, okay? Get you back down to camp, all right? God, I, 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 I kept saying, Bruce, don't freak out. You gotta help this guy. There's nobody else around. Nobody's gonna help him but you. All right, here. My concern was to get him to safety. Hold this too. Here. Okay, you ready? All right, here we go. Bryce was probably about 19 years old. Oh, you got him, Dad? I was in pretty good shape. I was a painting guy. I was up and down ladders all the time carrying stuff that requires a lot of strength. I said, I can do this. Come on, Bruce, you can do this. I just didn't realize how hard it was gonna be. A mile away, on the other side of the mountain, Bram's father is still searching for his son. With each passing minute, his anxiety grows. My fears was he slipped, broke a leg, broke an arm, busted a shoulder, you know, anything could have happened. Your imagination runs pretty wild when you're afraid. Here. Dennis won't ever give up, but the others know that the chances of finding Bram at night in the raging storm are slim. On the other side of the mountain, Bruce is struggling to carry Bram. His strength is running out. And I'm saying to myself, Jesus, this can't be this hard. And it was like the worst thing in my world. I thought, how am I going to continue this? But I said to myself, whatever you do, Bruce, don't give up. You have to get this kid back to safety. Bruce senses that Bram's shivering is getting worse. Okay. He's in severe shock, and his body temperature is dropping. Right. Hold him up. Hold him up. So I took my raincoat off, and I wrapped it around him to try to keep that warmth in him. All right. Sure, I'm in there. That's it. 
That's it. Every time we stop, all right? I'm gonna stand you up. I'm gonna put my arms around you. I'm gonna try and get you warm, okay? Okay. You ready? Okay, here we go. But the relentless storm and the slippery ground are taking their toll on Bruce. Only a few minutes later, he has to put Bram down again. Now it's only been 50 yards, and I'm winded again. And I'm going to myself, you cannot give up, Bruce. You cannot give up. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I am breathing so hard, and I'm sweating so bad. I know I'm in trouble. But Bruce knows he must get Bram off the mountain fast. If he fails, Bram will die. I says, God, I need some help. And then I fired off my three last rounds of my pistol to try to get more help. I heard a gunshot. And uh, I thought to myself, what a fool. Who would shoot an elk at this time? By chance, Andy Wolf has also been hunting on Horseshoe Mountain. When I heard the second shot, I got that uneasy feeling. And when I heard the third shot, I knew something was wrong. Somebody maybe was disoriented. I thought maybe we would just go find him and uh, help him off the mountain. Andy knows there are others camping nearby who can help him form a search party. I knew better than to go up onto that mountain in a storm alone. Joined by the other hunters, Andy Wolf sets off in the direction of the three gunshots. So here we are going to this huge mountain in the middle of the night with roaring wind. We we're having to yell to each other to even talk to each other. Unaware that anyone has heard his distress signal, Bruce struggles down the mountain. But the going is so tough, he can only manage a short distance before he has to put Bram down again. I says, God, I'm asking for help. I need the strength that this guy has. I need the strength that I had when I was his age. Give me that strength back just to get him to safety. He goes over my shoulder again, and I'll be damned, I started walking. And I didn't feel the pain anymore. And I felt stronger. And I walked, and I walked, and I said to myself, thank you, thank you, thank you. They're now less than a mile from Bruce's camp. And although Bruce has found a new strength and determination to carry on, Bram's condition is rapidly deteriorating. There were several times when I was carrying him that I felt like I was carrying a dead man. And, and so much so that I stopped to throw him back up on his feet to get him coherent. Graham was like in and out, in and out. He was okay, then he wasn't okay. He was real coherent, and then he wasn't. I'm saying, don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up. Yeah. All of a sudden, Bryce started yelling and says, Dad, Dad. Graham! Graham! Graham, you're going to make it. You're going to be okay. Is somebody's hit. Hey, up here. We were probably 45 minutes into our hike when we started hearing screams, screams for help.
I'll never forget the sight that I saw. It just was very surreal. Like, holy moly, <laughs> you know, this is serious. It's chewed up really bad. I don't, I don't know if he's gonna make it. I need some help. No, it's, okay. it's okay, I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor. You're a doctor? By an extraordinary stroke of luck, Andy Wolf is a doctor with specialist training in shock name? trauma. What's your name? It doesn't take him long to see how serious Bram's condition is. He was going into shock. Shock kills people. Man, come on now, stay awake, son. Doctor's gonna look at your leg now. Just take a second, and then we'll get you back home. Stay awake now. When I examined this thigh area, I reached my hand up in there, and my heart just dropped. I, uh, I could feel his femoral artery just like a garden hose. And right then and there, I thought, this kid can either lose his leg or his life. Um, we're going to be lucky if, he, if we save his life. You still with me? Talk to me, Bram. You're going to be OK, sir. Andy was, you know, checking my leg out. And he looks up at me and says, oh, you'll be, you'll be all right. I said, yeah, that's what they say in the movies, just where the guy tips over. Stop. Brad, come on now. That's it. Almost home. If we don't lose this kid from loss of blood, we could lose him from shock. Come on, give me a hand. If that artery goes and I don't get it stopped, it. we're going to lose him from that artery bursting. We needed to get him off that mountain to save his life. The camp is only a mile away from where Bram was attacked by the bear. It's taken him nearly four hours to get there. Guys, go try to find some help! Two of the rescue party are immediately dispatched to get help. The nearest ranger station is less than five miles away. But even if they make it there and call for air rescue, a helicopter would be grounded in this storm. Bram is a long way from safe. I felt so relieved that we got him in there. And it started getting emotional for me, because I knew we got to really save his life. We got to take care of him. Thank you. I'm going to need some water. I'd lost most of my adrenaline, so I was starting to feel more and I was thinking about, you know, you could possibly die. Bram was in a tremendous amount of pain. You could just see it in his face, but Bram's a cowboy and he would not complain if both arms had been chewed off. I put uh, a lot of antibiotics into him too, trying to uh, stem the tide of infection. The doctor knows that even if Bram survives the night, his injuries are severe enough for gangrene to set in, which means he could lose his leg, or if not treated quickly, his life. Do you have any dry clothes? Yeah. Okay. Unaware of the severity of his condition, Bram's thoughts turn to his family. I was pretty concerned about my my dad and my brothers, they had no idea where I was or if I was alive. I was sure they'd try to look for me and, you know, possibly get hurt themselves. Once we got him stabilized, I thought I could take a moment to myself. I wept. For Bram's sake, I wept because his father is without him. He, he, he's got to be going crazy. I would be if that happened to me. Up on the mountain, Dennis Schaefer is confronting his deepest fears. I got to thinking, man, I might not be bringing one home. You know, and that feeling down in your guts, I'll tell you what, is an empty, empty feeling. Searching the dark, treacherous slopes in a raging storm is becoming too dangerous. Dennis's friends decide it's safer to wait until morning. Dennis, we can't go on. I don't care how bad it is. I am not going back. That is my son out there. Dennis, please. I'm sorry. 
I was determined to be out there looking for him. But the mountains are unforgiving if you're caught wrong. And they will kill you. So I got voted down, and we had to go back to camp. Andy has managed to keep Bram alive so far. But now, the doctor spots a new danger threatening to kill him, gas gangrene. Gas gangrene is a deadly poison produced by bacteria trapped in infected tissue. It destroys flesh, blood cells, and blood vessels. Gas gangrene can travel six inches in an hour. If Bram's femoral artery was being attacked by bacteria, it would burst. Bram was in serious trouble at this point. He could very easily be dead by morning. How you feeling, Bram? I was laying there thinking that, you know, I could lose my leg, and the thought of dying was still there, yeah. I mean, I knew I was in bad shape. Dr. Andy Wolf has given Bram antibiotics and painkillers. But without more powerful medication, Bram could be dead within hours. The gas gangrene is spreading rapidly towards his femoral artery. If it attacks it, it will burst. It was very serious. It's, it was just as serious as a bear attacking him. Two miles away, Bram's father has no idea what's happened to his son. He spends an agonizing night waiting for the storm to abate. They wouldn't let me leave camp, and that was probably the biggest torture I went through, was being in that camp, not doing anything. They could drive you nuts as a parent. One of your kids is missing. You know that the, the elements are horrid. It's, it's unforgiving. I was awake all night, pacing, crying. Your heart just like it was going to explode, you know, because for the lack of ability to be able to go do anything and the unknowing, you know, you just, just sit down and weep sometimes. Andy and Bruce also spend a harrowing night, hoping Bram will survive until morning. Bruce tries to keep Bram from falling asleep. Wake up. How you doing? Andy said we need to keep him active and keep him going so he doesn't slip into like a coma or something like that. Talk to me, Bram. Come on. How you feeling? I didn't know how long Bram could last, but I knew that uh, at the level of care that he was at, that, that he would not last. Andy knows that the rapidly advancing gangrene will kill Bram if he doesn't get to a hospital fast. Stay awake, son. I felt very impotent. It was just every moment wish that the sunlight would come, we'd hear a helicopter. We stayed up the whole night. We took turns looking at his wounds, uh, changing his bandage, uh, waiting for help to come. But help is a long way away, and time is running out for Brown. Bruce and Andy don't know how much longer he'll survive. Just at daybreak, we heard the, the chopping noise of the helicopter coming. You hear that, Bram? You hear that? I was pretty excited when I heard that helicopter coming in. <laughs> I've never been so happy in my life as to hear rotor blades. 
was on its way. I was just relieved. You know, I, I, was, I was happy. Because I, I thought, wow, he's going to be OK. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, that's it, Bram. That's it. Watch your head. With Bram on his way to hospital, Bruce sends one of his party to find Bram's father. Bram! Dennis has been searching since first light. Our plan was to go exactly where we had all left off the day before and work our way down the mountain. If we found him, we were to shoot three shots and then shoot the fourth round. So then you would know that somebody had found him alive. Jubilation. Tears run down my face. And we're literally running down the mountain. You're just so happy he was alive. It took 18 days for the doctors at Billings Hospital to save Bram's life. Miraculously, they also saved his leg. I was pretty happy to see it when I woke up, that's for sure. I feel very grateful for all the angels on the mountain, Bruce and his boy and Doc Wolf. Those people really done us a, a great, great favor by taking care of our son. I'm not a hero. I just did what I had to do. I just know that I did the right thing. And, and to this day, I care about him a lot, more than he thinks I do. <laughs> when I left the hospital, they told me I probably would never be able to ride a horse or do this or do that. Riding horses is a pretty big part of my life, so. I think it was less than two months before I got on a horse. And I've been able to do just about anything I want to do. Despite his ordeal, Bram suffered no lasting injuries. Today, he's also a father and looks forward to the day he'll take his own son hunting on the mountain. <laughs>